Next, we're going to talk about the treatment of motor hyperactivity and inattention in patients with autism spectrum disorder, specifically psychostimulants. We're going to start talking about a case. A is a seven-year-old boy with autism spectrum disorder, and a major concern brought forth on the part of the parents was frequent stereotypy and ritualized play. At baseline, A has constant need to move and explore. He's easily distracted at school, despite numerous accommodations placed in part of the school. In the appointment with A, he has a constant need to move around the room, be redirected to stay in the office and take apart things in the examiner's room. He can't sit still for any prolonged period of time for any of his therapies at school, such as occupational therapy or speech therapy, and the need to take constant movement breaks very much limits the progress he can make. Any period of time where there's less structure, A engages in repetitive silly behavior and hyperactivity, which makes management very difficult. This constant silly limit testing behavior and destructive curiosity taking things apart makes community trips very difficult. So let's talk a little bit about the treatment for hyperactivity and inattention in patients with autism spectrum disorder. We'll talk first about stimulant medications, which fall into two major categories, methylphenidate products and mixed amphetamine salts, which serve to increase dopaminergic tone in frontal lobe regions of the brain. I'm going to start with telling you about an important trial that was done by the Rupp group of methylphenidate for the treatment of hyperactivity in kids with autism. This first trial I'm telling you about was done in 72 children, ages between 5 and 14 years old. To participate in this trial, you had to have significant ADHD symptoms in addition to an autism diagnosis, with the full range of severity of autism spectrum disorder, from higher functioning to lower functioning individuals with co-occurring intellectual disability. The study design was a four-week double-blind placebo-controlled trial with a seven-day lead-in period where subjects had a test dose, ensuring they could tolerate the stimulant medication. In the four-week double-blind placebo control component of the trial, for each week, subjects were on a different dose level of methylphenidate or a placebo. So those three dosage levels were 1.25 milligrams per kilogram, a quarter milligram per kilogram, or half a milligram per kilogram, corresponding to a mild, moderate, or high dosage. And that was dosing using immediate release on a a three-times-a-day dosing schedule. And then the fourth potential was placebo. So clinicians and subjects and their caregivers did not know what dosage the individual was taking or whether they were on placebo. The results of the trial showed that individuals taking methylphenidate were more likely to have reductions in hyperactivity as measured on the ABC, the Aberrant Behavioral Checklist Hyperactivity Subscale, as compared to placebo. And that was as rated by both parents and teachers that were blinded to whether an individual was on medication or not. There was about a 50% response rate to methylphenidate among children with autism. It was judged that 35 of the subjects taking methylphenidate were responders as compared to only nine taking placebo. And this was judged to be a positive trial attesting to the efficacy of methylphenidate for the treatment of hyperactivity in kids with autism. A large number of subjects had to drop out of the trial due to adverse events. About 18% of subjects, which is high for a trial, the reasons individuals had to drop out had to do with increased irritability, insomnia, or decreased appetite. Another important side effect that was seen in this patient population was social withdrawal. Social withdrawal is obviously a big concern in this patient population because social challenges are already a big issue. So. Any side effect that could decrease an individual's social interest or made their social withdrawal worse is a problematic side effect in autism. That was a dose-dependent side effect. So the higher the dosage of the methylphenidate, the bigger risk for social withdrawal. Social withdrawal is an important side effect to watch for when prescribing stimulants in children with autism spectrum disorder. There was a follow-up trial that was done in 2017 that showed better tolerability with long-acting methylphenidate There was a smaller number of subjects that had to drop out. It was a smaller trial, but it suggests perhaps long-acting forms of stimulants may be more tolerable in patients with autism spectrum disorder. The clinical approach to the treatment of motor hyperactivity and inattention should include methylphenidate and mixed amphetamine salts if there are already co-occurring issues with irritability. That might make a clinician think about the usage of 
these other non-stimulant medications before stimulants, clinicians may consider alternative medications such as alpha agonists or atomoxetine. So some key points to take home. Psychostimulants can be effective in reducing hyperactivity among the full range of severity of autism spectrum disorder, both higher-functioning individuals and individuals with substantial co-occurring intellectual disability. Research suggests a higher rate of tolerability difficulties with stimulant medications than seen in neurotypical children who have commensurate levels of hyperactivity and inattention. Social withdrawal is a dose-dependent side effect to watch for when prescribing stimulants in children with autism spectrum disorder.